Welcome to News 9 Mediaverse and you are watching on Point with me. Violence has raised its head once again in Manipur where 13 people were killed in a gunfight in Tengunpal district close to the Myanmar border on Monday morning. The red have not been identified exactly who they are. There is a lot of speculation. I am not going to go into that which organization were they affiliated to, which community did they come from, which part of the Manipur. But the fact of the matter is that what's happening in Myanmar is making its way to India. And that's the sum and total of our conversation. That Myanmar violence is impacting northeastern states. First, Myanmar violence impacted Mizoram. Thousands of people have come to Mizoram. The uh, police personnel, army, they all came to Mizoram. And now, what happened in Manipur is a direct fallout of Myanmar. And on this note, let me introduce my guest, Major General Ashwani Sivaj, Dr. Gwete, Associate Professor, Center of Social Medicine. Subsequently, I'll be joined by later, Swaz Chakma, Director of Rights and Risk and Analysis Group, and Dr. Siram Rajesh, journalist and social activists. And the reason why today I'm not putting out anything on graphics or region is it's too contested. But one thing is very clear that there was a gun battle. Uh, people were killed. A lot of theories are floating around. But the fact of the matter is 10 kilometers from the border. And uh, if you go to go through various newspapers like Iravadi and you know other uh, newspapers published from Myanmar in English language, you'll realize that they have a problem in hand. There are areas which is not in Myanmar army's hand, Brijesh. And this sort of a killing after peaceful Mizoram election, which we did yesterday, uh, where Suhas was with us. And I wanted to do that, but I thought you know, today, that, that Monday, I will not do it. You know, We'll focus on Z, ZPM. Can I say that the instability on Myanmar has started to impinge on northeastern states? Uh, we can say that, uh, Karthike. And the fact of, is also that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, that peace not being there in Myanmar and the listless situation which is there is al also causing, I mean, the entire situation is kind of more fertile uh, to for these people to exploit the situation. Uh, you know, we don't want to get into the details because, you know, it's, uh, it's not official, it's not completely substantiated. But one thing is for sure that the killings has taken place and 13 people have been shot dead. And it'll be extremely, uh, you know, it, it's an extremely worrying sign. You know, those bodies denote that, you know, not everything is all right. At the and I'm not running borders. the visuals. No, we are not running the visuals. That's, I'm not that's, running the visuals. That's, that's very responsible uh, of you, Karthike. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, that those uh, dead bodies are, are, are telling a tale. And I think, you know, the sooner we understand and realize the caution which is urging us to exercise, I think the better it is. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's a very precarious situation right there inter at the international border and also uh, within uh, the state of Manipur. General Sivaj, uh, first your opening comments on the gun battle which took place and, and most important of all, General Sivaj, the gun battle took place consume the time for it to finish, it ended, then the forces would could move in. Now, whether they took time because of uh, some strategic decision, because they, you know, why should a soldier come into a harm's way? But the entire thing happened and finished on its own and then the security arrived. Absolutely. See, uh, Kartike, what uh, point one has to understand, when the problem was going in Manipur, this area by and large was quite peaceful. And this is a cookie area. And so therefore, uh, the police presence is also very less there. And also the Assam rifle presence, uh, as well as the Central Armored Police Force. Now, when this incident had taken place, no security force uh, personnel was very close by. And hence, this uh, clash had taken place between the two uh, uh, militant group, possibly, and both belonging to uh, Myanmar, and one able to kill the other, about 13 of them, and also looted their weapon. The weapons were not found on the dead bodies of these people. Now, the point is very clear. Now, as far as Myanmar is concerned, there is no doubt 
टूडे द सिचुएशन इन द वेस्टर्न पोर्शन एंड द नदर्न ईस्टर्न पोर्शन ऑफ म्यांमार इज इज अ कॉज ऑफ कंसर्न फॉर बोथ म्यांमार एज वेल एज फॉर चाइना यू फाइंड दैट नंबर ऑफ मिलिटेंट ग्रुप्स हैव ओवरटेकन सर्टेन पोस्ट ऑफ द म्यांमार आर्मी एंड द मिलिट्री जनता इज नॉट एट ऑल इन कंट्रोल नाउ द इनफ्लक्स ऑफ दैट इन फैक्ट व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग इन मणिपुर हैज स्टार्टेड अर्लियर देन दैट whatever has happened in manipur it had its roots in uh, myanmar also because there is a uh, chin population there is jo population which were also coming and settling down in, in uh, Myan- uh, from myanmar to manipur in kuki dominated area but that notwithstanding what has happened in recently in myanmar is so fluid that that it has created many mo- uh, much more complex problem than the problem which was occurring as on today that the people in myanmar are feeling unsafe and they are trying to now come in india whether it is mizoram or manipur that is point number 1 the second point is number of militant groups which are operating very close to indian borders are also very crossing over to india and then thereafter again going back to myanmar so this complexity uh, situation which has built up our problem of kuki and mati which distrust is still there and the fluidity of the situation which has taken place in myanmar because the military junta is not control of that area has made this problem much more complex also toward our side what has happened is that about 5 to 6000 weapons are still at lock the web, the society is weaponized and so therefore anyone anyone taking arm and anyone taking law in his own is also possible so therefore the situation is so complex it is very difficult to reach to any conclusion this incident which has taken place very close to the myanmar border who were these people who were involved who are the people who have been killed certainly they don't seem to be local if there would have been local their identification could have been done but yes it is a cause of concern because the situation is not very good neither toward our manipur side and myanmar is so bad that you will find in time to come more influx of uh, people from myanmar including their army personnel and police personnel crossing over not only in mizoram also in manipur okay Karthi and ke. just to uh, just to our viewers uh, very well put jan just to our viewers the visuals which they uh, saw on the screen was of the day that was relieved by the uh, central ministries when the peace accord was signed by the yeah. home ministry the these are representative visuals and i have refrained from using those visuals in which the dead bodies could have seen i have not used the visuals purpose you know it uh, it you know it'll add uh, uh, oil to the fire uh, dr kite 10 kilometers inside the border i mean to say uh, with such ease and with such easy approach you know you know the people could just walk in you have a gun fight and they go away and they, and they have been uh, there were reports that the whole conflict happened because a certain part of a sacred institution was being looted there was an attempt to loot and then the conflagration uh, happened so it just shows that it is so difficult not only to track them, but to uh, for them to come 10 kilometers inside with guns uh, i mean to say it's not a matter of joke uh yes kartike you are right when you uh, talk about uh, where the violence is happening in terms of uh, the location uh and as report has suggested among the dead bodies found uh i mean there are uh, i mean none of the dead bodies are from the village and uh, where uh, i mean there are none of them from the villages so uh i think the question as uh, major sivaj has put in like when we talk about how how do we understand and initially in your opening remarks also as you have put in like the uh, the ongoing problem in myanmar how is that you know uh, may or may not be related to the ongoing uh, violence you know, Gita, my- i the reason why i take up this issue is because i feel that there is in a policy wongs in uh, early 80s and 90s you know there was a obsession when it came to pakistan you know uh, very few people would talk about china 
and then the things turned. It was, if you look at it, only uh, at the time of COVID and Xi Jinping reasserting himself vis-a-vis -vis China, vis-a-vis -vis India, uh, and all our uh, bilaterals failing, then the Indian public, the policy wonks, started writing about China. If you just do the analysis of what was being published, today no one writes on Myanmar. You know, I, I really find it surprising that I need to hunt for articles on Myanmar, Northeast, border, uh, some sort of a takeaway from the publications there, even those publications which are from Hong Kong and Singapore. There is nothing about this region, you know, it's like a, it's like a black hole. But the fact is it, in, it entirely affects our Northeast, what's happening there, and there is no news. It's just that this odd thing has happened, there, there are reports, they, they, know, they cannot be identified, but everyone knows that what's happening on the Myanmar border is started to have a bearing on uh, our Northeastern areas. Yeah, agreed, agreed to you completely. I'm no expert in political analysis and maybe I'll refrain from uh, commenting on uh, the political interventions taken or not taken from time to time with respect to uh, Manipur and with respect to the national uh, security at large. Yet what certainly comes across uh, without any ambiguity is the lack of political will in handling the grim situation in Manipur. And uh, when I say political will, uh, there are I mean, many pertinent terms like the intent, the motivation, or the capacity of the uh, government in terms of, uh, and those terms are very difficult to assess objectively. Uh, and uh, in terms of the uh, national security threat, and then uh, the kind of how ongoing conflict in Myanmar has also become an issue when it comes to uh, NRC and when it comes to uh, illegal immigrants or the uh, poppy cultivation and those things. So even uh, the question, I would I would say that what we should be uh, deliberating or what we should be asking is what, you know, how do we see uh, the larger electoral politics in Manipur that may or may not inform the ongoing conflict. And also Manipur under the present regime or dispensation, how is it different from and, you know, the continuity between the uh, earlier dispensation like the Congress and the BJP in Manipur and this problem I mean ethnic uh, conflict and violence uh, doesn't born in a day in a night I mean we all see as you said that uh, uh, the history of that conflict has been boiling and it's been simmering and uh, the dispensation present or in the past they all are aware about it but as I say without any ambiguity there is no, I would say that there is no political will in addressing uh, uh, the ethnic uh, conflict situation in Manipur. And this is what, you know, it has erupted to this situation. And there has, we see that strong devastation, death, and uh, many kinds of human suffering is happening even till this time. So the recent, uh, this violence, which is now, I mean, death of 13 bodies, which has been reported. But if you personally ask me, I don't see any connection with this ongoing uh, violence. Because uh, if you look at you, yeah. Okay, yes. please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, Complete. what I'm saying, uh, like if we look into the reports from the security forces and then uh, where they claim that none of the bodies are from the village and they have come from another place. And the local so sources also claim that, you know, they are the Métis terrorists belonging to the Chinese back uh, People Liberation Army and where they were attempting to attack the Zhou villages when they were uh, intercepted on their way uh, by rival armed groups who shot at them and seized their weapons. And uh, further reports also say that the Métis terrorists who have died in the firefight okay. were the newly recruited, indoctrinated Métis youths. So this kind of, you know, uh, indoctrinating and recruiting radicalized youth uh, to join their outfits and participate in terrorist activities, activities. And the state government and the Manipur police have maintained silence on this issue uh, otherwise, Manipur police is quite active in tweeting on X, but they choose to keep silent on this issue. So okay. it really okay. 
Okay, okay, that, see, see, okay, that, that, that's your point of view. Mr. Chakma, you know, is this, is, is this the scourge? Is this the problem of the underground? Is, this, there, is there a larger issue of underground, the problem of the underground outfits in Manipur? In which perspective do you see this? Well, I think there are two aspects into it and they may not necessarily be connected. I mean, this could be exclusively an internal issue um, of Manipur, given the fact that there are ethnic conflicts between two communities. Both the communities have insurgent groups or armed groups and the insurgents belong to the, the uh, reports are saying, that I'm not, uh, I'm just saying, the reports are saying that they were not local. The reports are that reports which have been published, uh, the definitive statement has not come, but the reports are saying that they are not locals. Maybe they were transiting. I'm just. Well, I mean, the question is, you know, I do not think we have the adequate documentation or forensic evidence to say that they are not locals. Local in the context of Manipur means that people we are not able to identify them from their villages. But if somebody has been recruited from 200 miles away and you know passing through, that doesn't mean that they are not locals. So I think there is an element which we have to take into account that there are insurgent groups from both the communities which cross into Myanmar very frequently and till the you know start of this conflict on third of May. I think Myanmar was being used by all the groups. That is why you know earlier you had seen the Indian Army. Uh, we are actually taking out military operations on the other side of the border. Uh, a couple of years back. So there is one particular aspect which we have to keep in mind that this is related to Monipur. But this did not necessarily be connected with the situation which we are discussing. This is in nearby Myanmar, where the troops or the insurgents from the Myanmar side you know, have crossed into India. I think we face a situation where there is no understanding of what is going on in Myanmar. The typical mentality of the authorities in Delhi is a Punjabi mentality. Just like the way you had seen the riots in 1947, that everything you see through the prism of a Punjabi, not Indian mindset. So therefore, each and everything you do have been focused uh, on Pakistan side, Punjab, etc. And if you look at the actions on which you have diplomatic fictions with the US and Canada, you would see the focus is so much on Punjab where Actually, in Punjab, there is no active insurgency in that sense. In the Northeast, in the context of Myanmar, I don't think we understand the issues. Our understanding of the issues is that, you know, the, we have been supporting the Myanmar government for donkey's years, from independence till date. And we still live in the presumption that the Myanmar government or the junta will survive. But if we see the developments in the last month and a half, the junta has collapsed. It is confined into the... Uh, you know, Burman areas, both in the Indian side as well as on the Chinese side of the borders, the military has collapsed and the military is not in a position to take back the areas which they have lost. They do not have the adequate resources. They do not have support from the Chinese as much as they would like. They do not have support from the ASEAN. So this resource crunched military is fighting quite resourceful, you know, people's defense forces and lots of insurgent groups. So what are you going to have? The understanding of the people in Delhi is Myanmar's army will support us. But they don't realize even today the fact that the Myanmar government has collapsed. So the border areas inside uh, Myanmar on the Indian border side or the other side of the Indian border and the Chinese side, they have collapsed. The government doesn't exist. So these are in the hands of the insurgents. Insurgents, by definition, do not have a structure like the way a government has. So therefore, these areas and territories... Saying that the insurgent groups can have a have sort of a mixed population in the sense, someone can be from the Myanmar, other can be from this side, you know? Well, absolutely. So, okay. Because from both sides, you know, when we are discussing, you say, you know, 10 kilometers away, uh, you know, people have come inside. You know, I mean, when I visited Mizoram, I mean, if you go into the Saya side, you would see that the you know, students from Myanmar coming to the school because there is a free movement zone, then they go back in the evening. So, you know, coming 10 kilometers inside the border, it's not even an issue in the Northeast because it's not the Punjab, uh, yes, sorry, Pakistan and India border. So I think we have faced in Myanmar will pose a serious threat. And I think India is left with a situation where it has no uh, kind of you can know, at least okay. if you look at it i mean okay. you know 
if you look at from the Arakan province, which is tip of the Mizoram, all the way up to Orunachal Pradesh, you will see that on the other side, where the insurgent groups are operating, India doesn't have adequate support. And India's entire investment, if you look at it, is in Arakan province. Now, I'll just take one minute. If you look at Arakan province, in 1998, there was something called Operation Lich. Then this National Unity Party of Arakan, we are massacred in Andaman Nicobar Island after a bomb is double agent. Somebody called Colonel Grewal had actually inter, you know, intercepted or, you know, I know the story. I, I, I know yeah. the story. So, you, so the, the Rakhine side, you do not have anybody because they are still in the psyche that, you know, Indians are not to be trusted. So the most powerful group there, and in fact, among the incident groups, the most powerful group is the Arakan Army. And Arakan army, on record, the Bamis had said are being supported by the Chinese. Okay. So if the Chinese are supporting the Arakan army. I mean, about a year and a half back, the Bamis military issued a statement saying, you know, uh, they are being supported by the Chinese and they have the anti-aircraft missiles okay. and etc. So you have a situation, all your investment in the Arakan province, including your so much touted Kaladan port, is in the hands of the insurgent controlled by no, the no, Chinese. No, that's very disturbing, it, you know. Uh, you know, that, that's very disturbing. For, and I'll say this for one reason, you know, the sort of investment we tried for Chah Bahar, it did not work out because of a regime change in Afghanistan, Taliban. That's the first thing they did. They attacked Dela Sanand, you know. It's a road which used to connect Chah Bahar, cutting across uh, from the west-east axis of Afghanistan, go to Kandahar and uh, connect Kabul and mazar sharif you know. Uh, but you know, there is another thing, uh, General Sivaj. You know, this was not a gun battle between security forces and these underground. Village Defense Council, VDCs, they were involved. So I was I was just thinking about the sophisticated weapons they must be having to go in for this sort of a gun battle. And you know, 13 men are down. You know, these are the weapons which are now in hands of people. But I, I mean to say, you have been in the uh, force for a battle to happen like that. And VDCs to have, you know, capacity to inflict that that much of a damage also tells us the sort of weaponry which is Absolutely. available, the firepower. Absolutely, uh, no doubt. See, the firepower is available in uh, uh, Manipur to an extent that there are about six to seven thousand weapons which are still at large, and a lot of weapons have also come from Myanmar. So even village defense council is also equipped. Even a normal. Civilians are also equipped. These weapons have not come back. Till the time these weapons do not come, you can never find a peace in Myanmar, uh, in uh, Manipur. Now, the question which was coming is that ki, what sort of uh, policy India is adopting as far as Myanmar is concerned? You see, this is a very complex problem. What happened is that up to 90s, we were thinking that we will support a pro-democracy movement and uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, which she was uh, behind the uh, you know, uh, iron bar, she will come one day. But as a nation, we lost out. And what has happened is that uh, China has come in a big way in Myanmar and our relationship has spoiled with uh, military junta there. And you find insurgents group operating from that area and coming to India. So in 90, a later part of 90s, our policy change, our policy change for good for the national interest, that whosoever may be the ruler of uh, uh, Myanmar, this can't be decided by India. But whatever is the present situation, try to compromise with it and have a workable relation with uh, that government. And hence in 1990, we opened a front in the later part of 1990, somewhere in 95, 96, that we start having a relationship with Myanmar government, and that is military junta, and we start giving the weapons also, training also, and our relationship improved, and that has helped our insurgent group, which were operating in Northeast, to some extent, were not given a free run there. Uh, this has helped, but then suddenly again, Aung San Suu Kyi came, again this time okay. military janta has come, we have invested there, Kaladan project we have invested, international trilateral highway which is going from India to Myanmar to Thailand, further to be uh, gone to Cambodia and Laos, that is also now gone in, in a cold storage. Uh, so the question is that Myanmar has been always under turmoil and this has not only surprised India, it has surprised China also. The China-Myanmar economic corridor is not completed. It is only 38% completed. 
and the way we are trying to convey the chinese are very smart people they know that the arakan uh, hills are very important arakan terrorists are dominating that they have bought peace with them and hence they are paying some money to arakan uh, militant and they are making china myanmar economic corridor which is going to kuwa kapu so the question comes is the handling of myanmar is not a easy job and the situation is fast changing there and now the military junta is also on a back foot because number of terrorist group have taken over number of posts which are very closing very close to indian borders and also to chinese border so the question comes is how do we handle it on the top of that we have a problem in manipur itself the okay. problem of manipur has started earlier than what has happened in, in myanmar recently where in okay. militant groups have now attacked on military junta so this has made the situation totally complex and it is not easy said than done how do we go there are two ways there are two problems which one is internal problem which have uh, between the kuki and methi the distrust which has come the situation is still not normal there is a buffer zone but still that peace is not everlasting the okay. weapons are still at large okay. there are 6 to 7000 on top of that what has happened in myanmar myanmar is under turmoil the uh, terrorist group are having a heyday they have already overtaken okay. some posts and the spill over of this is coming to india not only to mizoram but in manipur now the difference between mizoram and manipur should be understood i was operating in mizoram in later part of 70s in 77 78 and 79 in the southern part of mizoram which is longle long trai now what used to happen there is that that uh, you know uh, that terms of condition which are in manipur that you can go toward each other 16 km wasn't there so there anyone which was coming in indian side was considered as a terrorist whether from chitagong hills from bangladesh or whether it was coming from myanmar but manipur has been very different and hence it was much easier to reach some sort of uh, negotiation with mizoram national front and ultimately the peace process started okay. i was there that time 79 it got to 86 but myanmar uh, and manipur problems okay. are very different and we have to now sit down and think about how do we handle not only manipur okay. internal problem and how do we handle external situation between manipur and myanmar and how do we maintain this relationship with myanmar where no one seemingly seem to be in control especially the western part of myanmar bordering india okay uh, uh, very well put you know i'm i'm also i'm also joined by uh, i'm dr siram rajesh uh, journalist and social activist Uh, very warm welcome to you uh, rajesh after a long time on my show so what have you picked up on the uh, on this recent event which took place in manipur siram uh, <clears throat> yeah like uh, we all know that the 13 youths unarmed youth have been killed uh, brutally and uh, as uh, appeared from the report they are before they kill they were killed they were brutally tortured so it was not an ambush after they overpower they were all killed the 13 people have been killed and uh, uh, unfortunately if this incidents was happen to a kuki uh, uh, militant or any group then all the nation media from, you know, there say, has been uh, siram there has been no, no official me, statement from the no, manipur police no that is why i'm saying that is why i'm saying uh, like these three 13 people they are not killing themselves someone has killed in the area where the the security forces have dominating this area and no one is known that who have killed those people and they do not find any of the weapon uh, behind their bodies it means that after they were arrested and they were killed and they were just left behind so all those tortures in their bodies clearly says that the the area which were dominating in that area We are, we don't know whether the cookie militant have killed and nobody has claimed it. Uh, But it is, Siram, it is not I, I, you know, I have decided no, one thing. No. Siram, I have decided uh, uh. one thing. In my show, for a time, I am not going to use these two words, cookie or methi. That is why I have no, chosen I, to use the underground uh, militants. I have chosen to use... That is the official use, line also by Manipur uh, police. You know, I have chosen to use the word 
village defense committee you know i i will use word militants underground terrorists but i will not ethnicize my debate you know i will I, it's then, it's an attempt on my part because you know okay. you be become so prey my, to polarization no, the, you know you know please see okay. now you have come after a long time you know we, we the, i you know you, you the conversation should not polarize the guests also that is why i am not going to put the stamp of uh, methi cookie naga on it and i am not going to use that word no actually uh, yes i fear enough then i would put in such uh, in i would rephrase this word okay all these youths all these youths are now youths are all my days okay and 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 someone would have been killed it is not killed by themselves whether it is the the suspension of operation cookie militant the jra or any other uh, cookie militant would have killed or any other forces would have killed the point is that how these 13 youths unarmed brutally kill after they have been arrested this is the question the the government have to answer because you cannot say that somebody has killed no one is responsible no no siram you have a point you you definitely have a point 13 people were killed and arms were not found i also found no. it surprising ki if that was the case where have the arms gone no that is the question i am asking if if somebody says that they are they are actually suspected to a militant group then probably the arms should have been there in their behind but no arm were, were were recovered it means that and again many of them have been killed with a uh, hand folded it means that they were killed after they are tortured they are arrested and and this is thing so how could it be possible that the the agency are completely blind that they are being killed by no one so this is the answer has to be given number 1 number 2 in the last 8 8 months now the now the government is claiming that peace has returned but the attack on the maitai and the civilian casualty on the maitai you have been increasing day by day so government from the government side there is no initiative to have any kind of peace resolution or dialogue with the communities involved they have not invited in delhi rather the delhi is is talking to the separately to the in in the ethnic line so it means that the government is actually watching over the dead body of the people whether it's a kuki or whether it's a maite i am speaking as a manipuri and the way the government of india have, have failed to protect the life and the liberty and the property of the people in manipur how you are allowing this violence to continue for more than 8 months and this is a serious question and there is no serious effort from the central government to to control this violence rather you are watching and and allowing the uh, community to arm themselves and many youths are forced to defend themselves so what is this all about indian state is a big state indian state is one of the eight largest military power uh, fourth largest military power in the world and you are as a state you have failed to Uh, to peace bring justice you have failed to peace bring uh, to protect the youth whether it's a cookie or whether it's a maite so it it means that you have completely failed because the people of manipur also pay taxes and okay. the, every every community people they have right to be protected by the state where is the state the question okay. is where is the state has gone Think, Again, I think you I have, think these are legitimate are two, questions. No, you can ask me, that. That's me, the responsibility put, of the state. These are legitimate no, questions. Me, no, no. Let me put a one uh, the important because I uh, other panels were not disturbed. I let me put up some phrase so that it may be disturbing. My point is that state has completely failed or state has completely succeeded to divide the community. Okay, that means state should take the responsibility whether a cookie youth is being killed. or a maitai youth is being killed it is not about whether they are armed or non armed or militant or non militant because state has some responsibility to protect the life and the liberty property of the communities and you are watching and your security forces are deploying like a uh, peacekeeping force in other country manipur is not a uh, independent country it's part of india why is the legitimate forces using to control peace and uh, peace and the security of the people of manipur these are the legitimate question to be asked by the nation media and many other right thinking person even as you all know in the last 6 months report all if this 
the, the victim are supposed to be the tribal, then what the media would write? The majority suspected uh, Mita militia would have killed the cookie. But there is you no know, report. Siram, you know, I should be the, the last suspected. person. You should be putting up okay. that question. I, I, can I can say this with great pride. I think both me and Rajesh must have done the maximum number of debates in Northeast. At least from no, the question, way onwards. The question is about how you frame. Like Absolutely. Let, I am it's a democracy. If, you can frame no, your question. Is, My point no, is, is I'm, that I am not going I'm to... Questioning. Siram, I'm, I told you as an yeah. anchor of the show and the editor of the channel, I will not use ethnic phrases. I will not fall Then prey. you can use the, the suspected uh, cookies. Yes, the you, those are the correct words. But I will ensure that... Militant. The polarization which takes place, I don't fall to it. No, I don't no, fall no, to no, it. But anyway, you have no, the right as my guest because I have called you no, to put your point across. That's being no, democratic. My, then, then let me put in this phrase that there are uh, 17 but organizations. But you know, uh, are, Siram, on the yeah. lighter side, time is not infinite. It's finite when I say. There's a finiteness okay. of to my show, which means I need to accommodate Suhas, uh, uh, Bridges, mm -hmm. Dr. Gwete, you know, so many other people, you know, I have not even able to go to them. Dr. Gwete, because, you know, I, I will be closing the show in some time. Your response to what uh, Mr. Rajesh has said, because one thing I do, uh, I definitely agree, that which really intrigued me as a journalist was, where are the weapons, you know? No, weapons are, there, there's, a, I'll, I'll just uh, say you a line that uh, weapons, weapons? Uh, weapons not being there is not that alarming because Achha. usually also what happens is that you know when uh, there is a f if there is because i start with the caveat that i do not know what exactly happened okay there. so so i mean uh, i start with the caveat but going by how we have seen how the operations happen or how the gunfight happens most of the time or how it happens in in in, in uh, left uh, extremist lwe areas and all if there is an ambush you know they or they uh, post killing they just run away with all the weapons also so uh, uh, no weapon being found there uh, there could be one reason also that all those weapons could have been uh, you know taken away by the group which had attacked uh, the, this group of uh, 13 people okay dr with uh, yes, Kartike, as I say, ethnic violence is not uh, born in a day. So, you know, if you uh, kind of, uh, since the beginning, how it breaks out, Manipur has seen uh, many episodes of ethnic uh, conflict, but not of this magnitude. And so if we analyze it, uh, there are different ways of looking at it and how you know the youths are radicalized and how uh, as i said without any ambiguity there is no political there is lack of political will and when i say political will then the responsibility lies with the head of the state and if we see the role of the head of the state uh, uh, since the past 10 years uh, during he being the head of the state so you know you see the kind of policy which he has been taking uh, you know against uh, the minority tribal groups and uh, the, uh, and then uh, you know that that has lead to this point either we want to believe it or not but no leader till uh, in the state of manipur has bring manipur to this situation ever so i would say that like as uh, uh, romans has said that uh, we need to engage with the larger questions of how this uh, radicalization of youth of both the communities and uh, how, uh, you know, the question of uh, during the entire no, violence. The question I, would, of I, would go, I would go a little further. So has, it's both radicalization and militarization. Hmm. Well, first of all, I think, I mean, it's very difficult to draw any kind of conclusion as to what has happened, possibly the only way one could, you know, reach some kind of conclusion if there is a forensic examination whether the persons were tortured or not. So at this stage to say these people are innocent, these people are guilty, who killed them, who have not killed them, you know, without being present in the situation, even possibly even knowing which I agree. community they belong to, it's very difficult. Yeah. I think what I was trying to highlight with respect to Myanmar and the Monopoly situation is that there is a general lack of, you know, uh, initiative to address the situation. 
initiative in the sense i think uh, rajesh is completely right saying that there has not been any kind of peace initiative the only peace initiative if you tell me the uh, the msh they will say when well, the agreement has been signed with the unl that is not going to lead to any kind of peace which is actually uh, it is a want so if you look at the leadership uh, in the delhi i think we focus so much as part of the electoral politics that we are bringing development notice has changed that we are going to implement it in, in, you know act is policy this blah 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 all these bombastic things we say or the in delhi the way they speak they actually ignore the ground realities the ground realities with respect to this situation inside uh, uh, northeast in manipur and elsewhere as well as the situation which is prevailing just across the border one particular point which i wanted to mention is that you know imagine a situation tomorrow the government of india will say the terrorist in myanmar but if you go to myanmar if you go to international community they will say the junta is the terrorist imagine a situation where the junta collapses 6 months to 1 years time or is confined to very small area given the fact that it's not only the ethnic groups but people's defense forces which are also fighting then can you imagine the kind of impact you know theoretically it will have in the northeast because we are still not done with insurgency but if you speak to any bjp leader you speak to any home ministry official it's as if the conflicts are done thing and we have moved into the next phase and you know the kind of peace accord with the unlf will create that kind of an what to say impression so that is why i think you know i mean the north is doesn't matter people i don't think they are able to grasp uh, the situation and that is why they are ignoring the current situation i would say if you do not bring peace between the two communities in manipur to the satisfaction of both the communities not fully satisfied i would say this will have why the ramifications should myanmar junta completely collapse at this point of time nobody is thinking the myanmar okay. junta will collapse but i am telling you the junta will at least not come back to a situation where they will take back the area that's a very important lost. point swas that's a very important point they will further lose territory very important point uh, rajesh do you agree with swas i think that's a very important point he has made no no uh, this is the supplementary point of what swas has said and that the from the delhi side from the government of india there is no sincere effort to bring uh, the both the communities to have dialogue in eight months because the bjp mla who are openly saying for separate administration are the seven bjp mlas if the bjp mla minister gp nanda the uh, the, the president invite all the bjp mlas in delhi everyone will come but why they are not inviting they are not inviting because is the people are asking that is the government of india have a deliberate agenda of continuing this violence and and to prove that this community cannot live together any longer and they wanted to it's not about bjp council. mlas you know i don't no, think it's about bjp I'm, mlas no, i think is, it's about mlas talking no, on ethnic lines i, I would put it like this about the, no no my my point is that the bjp the, the kuki seven mp and the maitais they can be invited in delhi by the delhi central and they they could have actually forced them to sit down and what they want did they do they they are not doing the central government did they invite any community for a, a joint meeting they did not do they only come in the talking to the kuki okay. militant they only talking okay. to the maitai militant that means the people are asking that the east government of india have a deliberate agenda to okay. divide the community No, I don't think I'm the government of India. I don't think see them. Government of India no, has a deliberate no, agenda. Cannot, no, no, no. Government then of then India does not. not no government of why India are, will have a deliberate agenda not, to divide why, the community. But yes, I do are, agree. But I, yes, I do no, agree are, with you, see them. That no, the conversation which it is why, initiating why with the no, why, undergrounds, no, it should be initiated at the level of the civil society also. I do agree. But then you have another issue. Civil society organization themselves have added to a. A, a, a certain civil society members have definitely added to the polarization so yes i do agree if you want to connect with the underground you need to connect with other 
stakeholders. But I am also not going to use civil society. I am not going to use civil no, society because required. certain civil societies have polarized. Um, uh, General Sivaj, you wanted to come in. You wanted to come yeah, in. You had raised your hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kartik, I just want to say, yes, there is certainly one thing is very clear what one can make out uh, from other panelists also. That the situation in Manipur should be handled with maturity and you cannot allow that gap and distrust between two communities, Methi and Kuki, to prolong it because we have to resolve this issue and we have to make sure that the situation become normal in Manipur. Otherwise, what is happening is Myanmar will have ramification in Manipur, which is already a uh, situation is not normal. So, therefore, the point comes in that if there is a requirement of doing something extra, also I am sure central government will take action and they are uh, going in that direction because the point again and again come is where are those six to seven thousand weapons? Till that time, those weapons do not come back. Thinking of normalization in Manipur is a pipe dream. So this is what it is. There may be a requirement of uh, giving a mid-course correction, but time is running out. We cannot allow a situation which is prevailing between the two communities to further become complex because the situation in Myanmar will adversely affect what is happening in Manipur. That is a cause of concern. But I suppose one thing is very clear. The government is sincere. Central government want peace. It can't be said Correct. that central government does not want peace. North is very important for India. North is the gateway to the Asian country. Lot of active policy actions have taken place. But unfortunately, what happened between Cookie and Methi, no one ever thought. And it happened so fast that by the time the government could uh, realize it, the things were out of control. No, but General Sivas, I they completely are trying to agree with you. You can blame the government for wrong steps. You can blame the government for uh, wrong conceptions. But you can't. Uh, it's like saying that you did it purposely so that you wanted to uh, divide the community. I completely disagree with that. Y yes, maybe some steps have uh, yielded dividends. Maybe some have not. Some should have been earlier. Uh, but I would not... Uh, I would. I completely disagree that government wants to divide the community. No, no. Any person ruling Delhi has the responsibility of the entire community and the entire country. But yes, I definitely uh, would like to reinforce the point. And as a matter of fact, that the guns definitely need to come back. But more Absolutely. than that, Absolutely. these people need to be identified. I think what is also happening is, for everything, there's a side story in Manipur. For everything becomes a mystery. And then you have multiple narratives. And there is not a truth. You know, there were, It's a competition of seven, uh, seven narratives and seven truths. So I think there should be some sort of a clarity who these uh, people are. Uh, you know, in, in context of how did the gun battle took place, you know, these, these things must be clarified. And I would, I, I would, on this note, I would definitely, definitely say that if there is, if there is a development, we will have a show on it tomorrow again. Chat GPT. It can generate codes and human-like responses through texts, write stories, and do a lot more. I work in a newsroom with anchors, researchers and scriptwriters, graphic artists, producers, video editors, camera crew. But does a news...